So you are journeying along and you are mapping out your numbers and you are putting your budgets in place and you are subtracting your expenses from your income, but you're still seeing that you just don't quite have enough to give you that extra income that you need in order to pay off your debts. Today, I want you guys to tune in because we are in day six of the debt demolishing series and we're going to be talking about how to increase your income. Let's go. The Debt Demolisher TV with Sophia Meloni. Hi everyone, it's Sophia Melamy, the Debt Demolisher here to bring you the tools, tips, and tricks to help you manage your financial baggage the right way. Welcome back to day six of the Debt Demolishing series. We have been covering a lot over these past few days. I hope that you guys have been staying in the work, staying consistent, and doing what you can. Before we jump into the lesson today, I want to encourage you, if you are feeling any hesitation, any reservation, any frustration, I just want you to pause. Pause. Close your eyes. Breathe in and release. I want you to do this knowing that everything is going to be okay. Everything happens in its divine timing. I don't want you to feel frustrated as you go along this journey because you're looking at your numbers, you're looking at your budget, and you are seeing that you just don't quite have enough to really make ends meet in the manner in which you would like it to make meet. But let me tell you here on today, you have to pace yourself during this journey. Repeat after me. I am enough, this is my process, this is my journey, and I will get through this. Sometimes we just have to take a moment to pause and release the tension that may be coming up in our spirits because of the work that we are doing to try to press forward. Don't allow your fears, don't allow the enemy, don't allow your doubts to keep you where you are or pull you further back to the place where you were coming out of. So I know looking at all of this may be daunting and you may be feeling frustrated and you may be feeling like, Ugh, I don't know if I wanna proceed. I'm here to encourage you to proceed because today we're gonna to be talking about some coins. Can we talk about the coins, the coins, the coins? So the sixth step that I did to help get me into a position to pay off over $330,000 worth of debt in less than six years after completing steps one, two, three, four, and five, I had to figure out a way to increase my income. Because what I knew for sure was that the income that I was earning on my nine to five job was not going to be the only sole way that I would be able to get out of that much debt in the period of time in which I was getting out of debt. And on top of that, managing the responsibilities of being a caregiver, both emotionally and financially to my mom for so many years. So when you realize that you only have one source of income, it's your responsibility to figure out how you can create multiple sources of income. So what I had to do was look at ways in which how I could increase my income so that I can then take that money and do my allocation of paying God, paying me, and then paying everyone else but that paying everyone else would go directly to additional debt payments. So let's talk a little bit about what I did to get some additional income. So the first thing I did was ask myself, what are the things that people ask me to do that I've been willingly doing for free? So I've mentioned to you guys that I have a tax background. I was a former tax auditor. So I'm very familiar with the tax law and I'm very familiar with the tax practices and stuff just kind of comes in my head like it's nothing, especially when it comes to individual income taxes. And I was doing people's taxes for free. Like I would just do my family member's taxes. I would do my friend's taxes. And I didn't charge anything because, you know, I just went like, oh, I can help you. I'm all about compliance. So, oh, I can help you. I can do it. I can do it. You don't have to pay $600 to h and Block to get this done. You don't have to pay these uh, tax preparers all of this money to get, get this done. I can do it for you. But what I wasn't doing 
was charging for the value that I was bringing to them. But I didn't realize that. But the moment that I started this journey and I needed some additional income streams to come in the door to help me reach my journey a lot faster, I started to charge for what I did for free. So I began to put rates on my tax preparation services. People used to come to me and ask me to write their resume or revamp their resumes. I have a very strong way of wording things and moving things around and just restructuring things. And I was putting people's resumes together and they were getting jobs and doing all of this. And I started to turn that into a business. I started to charge for not only tax preparation, but I also started to charge for resume writing. And then because I was helping so many people, because they were getting jobs and their resumes were being picked up, they started referring me to other people. So I started to get additional clients and all of that helped. So I would say like in a matter of months, I was bringing in $1,000 here, $2,000 here, just by doing those services. Now, when it comes to tax preparation, you know that there's a season for that. So only like normally around like the beginning of the year, people kind of wanted to get their taxes done. And then after April, that income kind of subsided, unless there was someone who wanted to file their taxes later. And I'm like, oh, I didn't file. Can you do it? And if that happened, what did I do? I charged them a late fee. (laughs) Not really a late fee, but you know, after the matter. So I increased the price just a little bit, but not too outrageous, but just enough to kind of help with supplementing some of the costs and some of the things that I was paying for out of my normal budget. Outside of charging for tax preparation and outside of charging for resume writing, I started to look into the different ways that I could earn income by still experiencing life. So I started to do like secret shopping. I started to do surveys online. There's different surveys that you can do. Paid surveys is what they call them. And I'll just take a couple of minutes or a couple, maybe half an hour to an hour a day, bust out those surveys so I can get my little check in the mail. Every little bit counted. I was literally doing everything that I can do in my spare time to figure out how I could get additional income streams into the door. Outside of leveraging things that actually took my physical effort, I went to look around inside of my home to see what do I have? When you think about it, the scripture talks about using what's in your hand. A lot of times we have a lot of stuff in our home that we have not touched, that we have not used. It's trapped up in the closet. Nobody is looking at it. And it could actually generate income for you if you allow yourself to pull it and access it and put it on the market for sale. So I had been a bridesmaid in several weddings. I had a lot of electronics in my home. I had a lot of old, like, different knickknacks and shoes and things that were brand new that I never wore, never even held. And I was like, wait a minute, I can, if I'm not using it, obviously it's been in the closet for this long. Why not put it on the market and get something in return for it? So I started to look in spaces within my home to see what I can sell. I took my old bridesmaids dresses, put them up on eBay. I took my old Dooney and Burke bags, put them up on eBay. I took a lot of things. I'm telling you, I just went through to see, okay, what was fresh? What could I resell? And if it was something that was good enough to donate, just donate it and and create that space within my home to allow me to release the things that I was holding on to, but I was not utilizing. And I felt like I was not putting it in a place where it could be purposefully used. You can find different marketplaces where you can upload the things that you want to sell on and so that people can buy them. So think about what you have. Think about your creativity levels. I'm going to add this as well. If you are a natural creator, if you are a person who can design like digital images, if you are a person who are good at doing arts and crafts, you can consider putting your gifts, your gifts and talents onto Etsy.com, starting an Etsy shop selling those things, you will be surprised at the items that people buy that you think is just so natural and innate for you to do. Someone is willing to buy that, but they just haven't seen what you have on the market. So what do you have in your possession, whether physically or internally because of your gifts that you can now use to manifest it and transition it over into a source of additional income streams for you to use to be able to pay down your debts?
because it is extremely important for you to understand that multiple sources of income, multiple income streams is pivotal in this journey. It is pivotal in this journey to debt demolition and not only just debt demolition, but accelerated debt demolition. So in this space, we are here to put in the work we are here to leverage what we already have access to so that we can use our gifts, our talents, our possessions to be able to multiply it out so that we can get more in to increase our bottom line, our equities bottom line. So that's all that I have for you guys for day six of the debt demolition series, the debt demolishing series. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure that you come back tomorrow for day seven. Go ahead and get to work and start thinking about what are some things that I can do? What do I already do for free? What are some things that I can start charging for? What are some things that I can make? What are some things that I can put on the market? What are some things that I already have that I can sell? Be strategic. Think out the box. Don't limit yourself because the moment you limit yourself, it's the moment you're limiting your income. And that's not what we're here to do. So thank you so much. I will see you guys tomorrow. Remember that your financial prosperity awaits you. And so does your financial sanity. That was really loud. Until tomorrow. Bye. The Dead Demolisher TV with Sophia Meloni. The Dead Demolisher TV with Sophia.